Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. An Antiguan bank tops the ECCB's service award for 2020. This story takes the lead in our 1013th edition of Caribbean Perspective for Wednesday, 23rd December 2020. Details when we return. Welcome back. A bank operating in Antigua has been recognized for outstanding service by the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, the ECCB, at a recent virtual awards ceremony. ABS's Jessica Russell reports. The 2020 ECC U Bank of the Year Award for Customer Service goes to the CIBC First Caribbean International Bank Barbados Limited, Antigua and Barbuda. CIBC First Caribbean's Antigua branch was recognized at the recently held Eastern Caribbean Currency Union Bank of the Year Awards. The bank was adjudged the best for customer service based on these principles. Our first category is customer service. The recipient of the ECCU Bank of the Year Award for customer service demonstrates the delivery of highly personalized commercial and retail banking products and services. It supports and promotes client relationships and gives commendable priority to staff development. The bank's country manager says the award shows the company is living up to its mandate. And I humbly accept on behalf of all the staff at CIBC First Caribbean, we have one mantra and that is to be the leader in client relationships. And this award really demonstrates that what we are trying to do is being um, lived. And we just, again, would like to thank ECCD. This is the second year the awards ceremony has been held. Twelve banks across the currency union participated. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Public health authorities in St. Lucia are taking heed of the new strain of the coronavirus in the United Kingdom. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmont George says that viruses change over time and hundreds of variations of the SARS CoV 2 virus have been identified. She explains that the newly identified strain in Britain has been in circulation since September 2020. Gina Felipe of HTS News Force has more. Mutation. The word usually invokes fear of scary changes and ill informed conversations of mutations. But every virus mutates as part of its life cycle, which is the case of the SARS-CoV-2. Research shows that the new coronavirus is an RNA virus, a collection of genetic material packed inside a protein shell. Studies indicate that RNA viruses like the flu and measles are more prone to changes and mutations compared with DNA viruses such as smallpox and HPV. The UK has been isolated by countries in the world over due to a new strain of COVID-19. There have been growing concerns that this new strain may be more pathogenic or tied to higher morbidity. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar george says it is too soon to say whether the new strain is more deadly. On December 14, 2020, the United Kingdom Public Health Agency reported a variant of SARS-CoV in 1,108 individuals. The newly identified strain has been in circulation since September 2020 in the United Kingdom. It is important to note that feature of viruses that they change over time and hundreds of variations of SARS-CoV virus have been identified with time. The preliminary analysis in the United Kingdom suggests that the virus has an increased risk of being transmitted as high as 70%. The United Kingdom government has noted significant transmission and spread in the areas where the variant of SARS-CoV-2 strain has been found. There is no indication at this point of increased severity or harmfulness associated with this new variant 
or any challenges it shall pose to the effectiveness of the vaccines currently available. Health officials will keep abreast with the COVID-19 situation globally and will tweak protocols to meet these changes. As of Monday, December 21st, 2020, St. Lucia has recorded a total of 287 confirmed cases of COVID-19 out of a total of 18,642 tests for the virus that have been processed to date. We have recorded a total of 243 recoveries and a total of five COVID-19 related deaths. Currently, there are 22 active cases and there are no critical cases in care. There are no new cases reported today, December 21st, 2020. The Ministry of Health and Wellness continues to monitor the global and regional analysis of the COVID-19 situation as we actively assess our risks and make the required recommendations to adjust our response to suit. We note the steady rate of increase of COVID-19 cases in most countries as they experience their second wave of the pandemic. We continue to be guided by best practices as we strengthen the existing national protocols. Dr. George continues to urge St. Lucians to restrict their movements and public gatherings to decrease chances of contracting the virus. The public health team at the Ministry of Health and Wellness is reviewing all information in relation to this new threat in consultation with our international and regional public health agencies to guide the way forward in reducing the possible impact to our country. This situation further proves the importance of strict adherence to all protocols recommended to reduce transmission of the virus. There is need for maintaining and even increasing our vigilance at all levels where risks have been identified. As we celebrate the Christmas season, let us all remain on alert and remain committed to protecting the health and safety of our family, friends, colleagues, and neighbors. We ask all to minimize their movements, avoid social gatherings and other activities which will bring about greater exposure to the virus. A new strain of the virus has also been identified in Denmark, Italy, and Australia. Gina Filippi, HCS News Force. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Over in Guyana, the APNU AFC Member of Parliament, Ganesh Mahipal, who is responsible for local government affairs, is accusing the Secretary of the Local Government Commission, Nikolai Price, of overstepping his boundaries. More from HGP's Wendell Badri. APNU AFC Member of Parliament, Ganesh Mahipal, is questioning the authority of the Secretary of the Local Government Commission, Nikolai Price, in relation to some documents he drafted, signed and issued to officials within a few local authorities, under the purview of being instructed. The Member of Parliament pointed out that the life of the Board of the Local Government Commission expired since October 2020, and given that the Secretary is instructed by the Board, the question lingers as to who might have instructed the Secretary to carry out the actions. In a letter seen by this newscast, dated December 11, 2020, Price's signature was attached to a letter issued to the town clerk acting of the Mayor and councillors of the City of Georgetown, informing her that a request for a deferral of leave for the city treasurer, John Douglas, could not be granted, as had been requested, and that he should proceed on the 42 days vacation leave accrued by him. In another letter, dated December 8, 2020, Price wrote to the mayor of Cariviton, Winston Roberts, informing him that the treasurer of that municipality, Ronita Griffith, should proceed on paid administrative leave, effective December 8, 2020, pending the outcome of an investigation into the vote of a no-confidence motion by the council against her. In her absence, the senior finance clerk, Judy Gajadar, had been appointed to carry out the functions of that office. Efforts by this newscast to reach Mr. Price for comments on the issue proved futile. Wendell Badry, HGP Nightly News. Lead by example, that's the call coming from the University of the West Indies to healthcare workers. As the university says, there can be an undermining of vaccination by that particular group. TV6's Alicia Boucher has the details from the Vice-Chancellor's Forum to discuss COVID-19 vaccination. 
The Moderna vaccine has now become the second of its kind to be approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for emergency use in the United States. And as the world seems to be inching closer and closer to vaccination on a global level, a nurse reportedly fainting after receiving the BioNTech vaccine, and rumors that a government official in the U.K. faked being vaccinated might cause skepticism, discouraging vaccination against the COVID-19 virus. That's added to myths among the population, one of which is that vaccines are intended to make African men sterile. According to head of the School of Nursing at UE's Five Islands campus, Karen Josiah, it is important that healthcare workers in particular stand at the helm in that regard. How do we you now dispel those doubts and fears? That becomes very difficult. And I think um, health officials, healthcare workers, for example, must come on board to help too, because healthcare workers can undermine vaccine progress. Josiah's call to them is to lead by example. And so, yes, we ourselves must feel comfortable as healthcare workers, because if we're not safe, if we ourselves have, have our own doubts, then how can we now convince the public of the safety and efficacy of these vaccines. Both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines had to complete the stage three trials before being approved. Professor of Molecular Genetics and Virology at Huey, Dr. Christine Carrington, notes that the process is intense, and by that stage, side effects both common and rare are generally detected. Trials involve a group of controlled as well as vaccinated persons. All the trials rec um, recorded adverse events, but they occurred no more frequently in the vaccine group than in the um, control group. Um, as I said before, there were a few adverse events that might have been associated with the vaccine. They were investigated, and the conclusion was that none were likely to have been linked to the vaccine. Dr. Carrington notes that severe allergies to the vaccine have been seen in a few persons who generally suffer severe allergic reactions, and all have so far recovered. Chairman of the UE COVID-19 Task Force and immunologist Professor Clive Landis says vaccines have the potential to not just seriously reduce mortality and infection rates, but eradicate viruses, as was seen in the case of smallpox, which killed over 300 million people. And while history has recorded some highly unethical practices and experiments, including among Black and Caribbean populations, Dr. Landis believes there is a positive side to bear in mind. But we must never forget what vaccines have actually achieved um, uh, for all of us in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. So over the last 70 years, life expectancy has, has increased from around 50 years to 75 years. That's a 50% increase in life expectancy. Alicia Boucher, TV6 News. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.